Yes, I'm sure when you started writing a lot of, maybe some of these short stories or ones that didn't make it, you kind of have that um, question as to whether anyone's actually ever going to see them or read them. And then um, now you're writing a novel, and <clears throat> which is going to be published. Do you feel different when you sit down to write knowing that something's going to be read by an audience rather than that like uncertainty? Thank you. Number four. Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, so I'll repeat the question. Um, the question is, um, when I was writing the stories, I, um, did, did, I, did I ever think about the fact that um, people may possibly not read them and it possibly not, might not be published and is the experience different um, when writing a novel knowing that it will be published and read? Um, yeah, the experience is totally different. Um, with the stories, I really had no idea that anyone was going to read them. I think because I took so long with them, like the economy did all this stuff <laughs> while I was <laughs> writing them. So I remember when I first started writing, I was in grad school, and I was um, and I was in grad school in New York, and it was like kind of a, um, like I felt like people talked about all the professional stuff maybe a little more than I needed it to be talked about at that time because I was so new to it, and so I felt like people in my class like got agents and they published their books and like it was just sort of happening and it freaked me out like I know it should have made me feel like okay this is an actual possibility but it just made me feel super nervous and protective of my stories um, because I thought my god I only have one chance to have a first book and this thing just doesn't feel ready yet and so it just made me like not want to have an agent and not want to think about that and I just like put my blinders on for so long and so that was like when everything was great and I feel like I knew people who were selling story collections and they were doing like the two book deals and all that stuff was happening and then suddenly like the economy tanks and like no one's buying any books and everyone's talking about how like, people would like laugh when I said I was writing a story collection like people would actually like either laugh or look at me with pity and um and it just made me kind of pissed and I was like okay well maybe no one will buy my book and maybe no one will care and it just made me it freed me up in this really great way where I was like, okay, it's very possible that no one is going to be interested in this book and that it won't be published and that just means that the only thing I can control is the book and the only thing I can control is my relationship with these stories. And so I just, yeah, it was like for, for the whole time I was writing, like until like a couple years ago, I wouldn't send any stories out to journals. I just didn't want to like put them out in the world at all until I was ready. And so it's a really, really different feeling to feel like you're writing under, like I'm writing under a deadline, I have to turn this book in, like people are, you know, expecting it. And that does feel like a very, very different experience. And it's the experience that I had dreamed of, and I'm really grateful for it and thrilled. But it is a different thing also to know that, um, yeah, that I, that, I, um, that I have to finish it. <laughs> So um, back to what you guys were talking about before I, I interrupted you with the time. Um, so, <laughs> so you're talking about yeah, how you, you turn to poetry. Have you ever written poetry, or like when you know when you were grad school, did you have to experiment with that that art form, or is it just something that you read to sort of like revel in life? What do you need to repeat the question? Um, do I write poetry, or is it something that I read um, just as to for the language and for inspiration? It's totally something I read. I think I'd be like the worst poet ever, and I've never even tried to write a poem, and I just know I'd be really horrible at it. Um, yeah, I just would. I just know it, and and it feels because it it feels like this kind of unknowable thing, and I think it's the mystery of it that makes me admire it so much. Like I think that if I tried to pick it apart the way that I pick apart a short story, or I'm starting to pick apart a novel, it might lose lose the this like kind of like special and like a feeling that I can't explain when I'm reading it. Do you guys want to say anything? Yeah. I have a question oh. for both of you. <coughs> As a short story uh, writers and crafters of short stories, do you feel ever pressured by the industry to create a novel? Uh, yeah, I've got tons of pressure. <laughs> Uh, I mean, and it was this really annoying thing where, um, you know, you would meet someone and they'd be like, oh, that's great that you're writing a story, you know, do you ever think it could be an author? Like, what if you just sort of, like, you get, like, you know, you publish a story in a journal and you think it was this great thing because an agent or editor would write to you, but it's like the most pandering mm -hmm. email to get when someone's saying, like, this form isn't, you know, sellable, so make it this thing. And it's like, oh, sure. Like, when it's, you know, as a, like, 
I definitely got that, and it was frustrating also because I think there's something about saying like, oh, short stories are what you know writers do to get their sea legs before they write the big bad novel. Um, that feels condescending to me when I think that short stories are this wildly different form that require a totally different set of skills. And I found that starting this novel, like I, I need a completely different set of skills to write this thing. Um, so yeah, I've gotten that question. But then you find these people that don't ask it, and that's like the most gratifying and wonderful thing in the world. Like, you know, my my agent or my editor, like they never asked it. And I remember with my agent, he was just like, he never said, do you have a novel? He was just like, oh, this is your story collection. I thought, okay, this is the person I want to work with. And it was the same thing with my editor. She's like, of course these are stories. And so I think if you find these people that just sort of get it and and they appreciate the form, then you know that's all you need. Yeah, I um, I think I think I I, I started off writing short stories, um, um, but but actually no, I I think I, I wrote a failed novel before I, I wrote a, a short story, um, and I think that that's the form that, that I'm I'm more drawn to, um, and so even with these these stories which. Um, which I wrote really because I had to write stories in graduate school. Um, I, I couldn't really workshop any any um, novel chapters, um, and so all of these stories have sort of grown out of, of that. Um, and now I feel like um, like I want to make it more novelistic. Um, and then that wasn't you know that wasn't my editor never um, suggested that idea or anything. It was, it was sort of my own um, my own inclination. I think. Um, but uh, but I feel like I feel like um, yeah that that I think if you can find those people who um, you know respect and and um, are engaged in 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 the short story form um, I think it's it's sort of unfortunately there's there's um, not as many of them around perhaps today as, as you know mm -hmm. um, seventy years ago. Um, but 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 I think that there's still plenty of, of people who are interested in the short story as um, as both writers and readers and, and editors. Um, yeah, I think so. I feel like people keep sending me articles that the short story is back. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, I, did you get those too? But I feel like it's. I didn't know that it went anywhere. So I think that if you love short stories, the short story didn't go anywhere. But I think right now yeah. people are saying the short story is like happening. Yeah. So. With those iPhones and <laughs> that's what you hear. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have other questions? Mm -hmm. I was curious what um, you guys were both studying as what role the workshop played in your short stories or atoning your your novel or if it played any at all. Um, yeah, I, I workshopped my my novel um, my first year there, and uh, Elizabeth Talent um, uh, read it and. Um, um, and she was she was just terrific. She I, she tweeted this one sentence, and <laughs> my editor um, later said that it was her favorite sentence. <laughs> and I told her I didn't write that. <laughs> um, um, uh, but uh, but but yeah, I mean it's it's it it, it was um, it was enormous, enormously helpful in in, in um, the very final stages, sort of of. of Figuring out that novel, and then later with um, with with these stories, um, the idea for for this uh, this sort of more novel like collection um, came from a conversation that, that I, I had with Adam there, um, and uh, and yeah, I think that that you have these these really brilliant writers that you're working with, um, who are your colleagues, who are. Um, are sort of you know walking down down that road um, with you and uh, yeah I, I thought it was enormously productive. I know I was so happy when I got it. I'm just remembering you talking like I I just like dreamed about it and um and I had been like before I got it I had I was working four jobs and I hated all four <laughs> jobs and I was just like kind of miserable and not writing and fantasizing about writing but not doing it. And so I think it was just this idea that you had one responsibility a week to go to workshop, and that was the only thing to do. And it kind of blew my mind. And so I loved it so much. I didn't, um, and, and while I was in Stegner workshop, I just decided like I won't show my stuff to anyone else. So I didn't, um, I didn't give it to any other friends besides my workshop. I didn't send anything to journals or magazines. Like I just wanted to just kind of trust this group of people and see what I could do in two years. And that was just so amazing. 
And um, it was really incredible. And it was also that I felt like everyone in my class was so talented that it made me less lazy. Like, I just felt like, okay, like, I can't mess around because I felt like I clearly felt like I was the one. I, like, forever I thought, like, there was another Molly Antipole and they'd messed up and that Molly Antipole was supposed to get it. And I feel like, and then I say this and other people had that same thought of, like, everyone else in the class is so good and uh, what am I doing? And But it was just this feeling of, like, God, I just have to step up and, you know, and, and try new things because you only get two years. You know, you have these two years before you're, um, you know, working a lot of jobs again. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was really great. Uh -huh. um, I guess what, um, like what in your uh, background drew you to um, be interested in Russian politics or write about the Communist Party? Um, I mean, I guess I was like seven in 1991, so I don't have an excuse. <laughs> I don't know. What, like what got you into that? I mean, it really came in the beginning. I think... <sighs> I think if I tried to boil it down, I mean, you know, I come from a family where it's just sort of like dinner conversation, you know, like everyone in my family. I feel like I'm definitely, by being a fiction writer, I'm definitely like the least political one in the family. And, um, and you know, it was just sort of what everyone was talking about and everyone was involved in. So it was this thing that I didn't even really question. Um, but I think it really did. If I were to boil it down, it would be just this idea of like what it was like for my mother to, to sort of grow up under such a highly watched political family and what that kind of did to her long term and that's what started and and then I think um, it's been interesting to watch my family and I think it, very much it came from my family like one of the stories was inspired my aunt and uncle um, moved back to Ukraine so they were living very comfortably in California and they decided to go and do humanitarian work in Ukraine and just settled there and now they live there and I visited them there and that kind of move back to the land was so fascinating to me that 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 was something that really captivated me. Just these sort of, just the idea, and just also these ideas of like, the, your question, it's, it's, I'm, I'm stumbling over it a little bit because it was something that I thought about so much as I was writing the book, which is why am I so obsessed with these parts of history that I was too young to live through or that I didn't live through at all? And it was almost like when I became aware of the fact that this question kept coming up for me, I just had to write directly into it in the book. So. You know, I have one story where it's a grandmother doing a direct address to a granddaughter, and the grandmother's saying, like, I worked really hard to move past all this stuff, and what's your problem for being so obsessed with it? And so it's this idea of just saying, like, okay, how can I directly address what happens if in one generation you work really hard to forget something, and then the next generation is obsessed with asking you questions about it? Like, what does that do to a family dynamic? Mm-hmm. Young, really, you know, preteen um, to to older people. Do you find any of those more fun than others to write? Or um... yeah, um, I love like middle-aged men. I love that voice. <laughs> it's sort of like my sweet spot uh, for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny, it's also like, you know, because this book took me 10 years to write, so like all the stuff in my own life is happening during that, and so some of the younger voices felt easier for me to do in my 20s, and I think now, like, I'm maybe closer in age and mindset to some of their parents, and so it's easier for me to write from the parent point of view, um, and so, it, it, yeah, I feel like what is harder for me now is that teenage voice, like, I feel like I can't catch, catch the rhythm as much now. And I can see with my students like how it can come so naturally to them because they're closer to it. And so they have a sense of the rhythm and kind of the music of it in a way that came easier to me when I was in my 20s. And something I've been really aware of lately is how to kind of get back into being able to do that voice. And yet older has always kind of felt easier for me for whatever reason. Well, thank you. Oh, oh okay. So I just want to say thanks so much to our authors tonight. And um, thanks for all the questions. And we're going to have book sales in the back, so please do um, buy books, support authors, buy as many books as you possibly can. And we'll see you um, next month. Keep looking at liquid.org for future events. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, folks. It's so great to be here.